What up, what up? 大家好，我是唢呐。Hip hop has taken over the Super Bowl. West Side motherfucker. But did you catch everything? I bet there are several things that you didn't know go deep, so deep they put your ass to sleep. And my Jimmy runs deep, so deep, so deep, put her butt to sleep. So on this episode, 干我很久没有讲那句话嘞。I am gonna show you the top six hip hop Super Bowl Easter eggs that you absolutely must know. But before we get straight into it. This Super Bowl is actually one of the most special in its entire history, and this is because this is the first time in 30 years that LA has hosted a Super Bowl. It is also only the second time in the Super Bowl 60-year history that a home team has won in its own stadium, and also this is the first time that the entire lineup of the halftime show is hip hop, and these West Coast motherfuckers turn the Out. Now, I'm sure you recognize most of the performers up there on that stage, and you certainly knew their hits. But I bet there are a few things that you had no idea what it meant, but you absolutely must know. Number one, food to die for. Now, the opening of the show in the right-hand corner, you probably saw a short glimpse of this sign that says Tam's Burgers, and this ain't no regular burger joint. This burger joint and restaurant is the go-to stop in Compton for gangsters and for rappers. Yes, I be hanging out at Tam's. I be on Stockton. I don't do it for the gram. I do it for Compton. I'm at the Tam's Burgers eating fries. Now, how many niggas done died eating number five? And it also was the seed for a gangster fucking murder, yo. Tam's Burgers was also the scene where Suge Knight ran over and killed a motherfucker, and is now serving life in prison for. Now, right next to Tam's Burgers is some place a lot safer, and that is Dale's Donuts. Now, you might be wondering, hey, LA 不是辣妹中心吗？不是有太阳啊，有屁股啊，有大奶呀、啊？我跟你讲。L.A. is considered the donut capital of the entire country, yo. People from all over the United States come to Dale's Donuts to get a taste of that Yuan Wei Tian Tian Chen. And trust me, there is nothing more hip hop than a sweet, warm, cream-filled hole. Number two, Eve After Dark. Now, don't get it twisted. I know the title sounds like some dirty ass A P N. But this is actually the name of one of the legendary clubs in the entire West Coast. This nightclub opened the same year of the birth of hip hop, and it was also the first club that ever invited East Coast rappers to perform on the West Coast. They're the ones who gave Run DMC their debut, and that's just the beginning, yo. This club is where a young DJ Dr. Dre learned how to DJ and became the resident. Calling Dr. Dre to surgery. I'm Dr. Dre, gorgeous hunk of a man, doing tricks on the mix that no others can. And it is also the very spot where he met Easy E and Ice Cube to form N.W.A. This is a big. Piece of West Coast history. Number three, the secret musician. Now, the Super Bowl halftime show is considered one of the biggest live events in American culture. Real talk: a hundred million people tune in live to watch people turn the fuck up, and the people that perform rehearse months in advance to make sure they don't fuck up on live TV. Which is why, usually, to play it safe, they use a backing track. But my boys, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, and 50 Cent kept that shit real gangster, son. They actually hired a live band, and not just any band. You see this hango here in the swaika? They're hitting the drums. That mother. Ain't just a drummer, yo. That is multi-platinum Grammy Award-winning artist Anderson Pack. Baby, why you doing this? Why you doing this to me, girl? My man is famous in the entire Western Hemisphere, so props to him for sitting up and playing drums for these guys.
I mean, seriously, how could you miss this? My boy's got his name written on the goddamn drum set. Number four, the top dog. Now, during this performance, the camera was moving around a lot, trying to catch everybody. But if you were sharp and paid close attention, you would have noticed a short reference to one of the biggest songs and biggest catchphrases in hip hop history. Come back, get back, that's the part of success. If you believe in the S, you'll be relieving your stress. Not only that, but good on Snoop for giving a proper shout out to his mom who recently passed away. Number five, the controversy. Now, some of you might know what's up and some of you might not have any idea what my boy is doing. He's certainly not preparing to propose to a bitch and he definitely ain't playing to the Lord Jesus Christ. My man is paying respect to one of the biggest controversies in NFL history. And in doing so, this was actually one of the biggest controversies of the entire Super Bowl. In fact, people are still talking about this right now. So let me clue you in. In 2016, NFL football player Colin Kaepernick kneeled to protest against police brutality because of all the crazy shit of cops killing niggas that was going on during that year. Now, if you're not American, let me clue you in. Singing the national anthem is considered the biggest display of patriotism. All of us when we were kids had to put our hands over our heart, pledge allegiance to the flag, and sing the national anthem. It is a sign of respect for your country, and it is also brainwashing nationalism. Let's be real. So when my boy got down on one knee, white people's head exploded, yo. Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out, he's fired. He's fired! Trashing the American flag is like endemic of police brutality. Is first of all, it's bull, but second of all, it's actually divisive on an issue that does not need to be divisive. If you're going to disrespect the whole country, then there's a problem. It, Colin Kaepernick does not understand the big picture of his country, and as a result, Colin Kaepernick has not played football for the NFL since his career was ruined. So the fact that Eminem dared to get up there at the very event that's hosted by the very people who fired that motherfucker. Bro, props. You got serious balls. Number six, rapper in the shadows. And this is one that probably very few of you know about. Now you might be wondering, how is it that they were able to pull off an entire Super Bowl halftime show of pure hip hop? After all, this has never been done in the Super Bowl history. Well, this is because somebody was behind the scenes pulling the strings, son. And the man behind the scenes is none other than hip hop's First, billionaire, Jay-Z. My man not only has a partnership with the NFL, but he might very well become the first African-American and the first rapper to ever own stake in the National Football League. Real talk, Jay-Z is the Don Corleone of hip hop, yo. Be my friend, Godfather. Good. Now, before I sign off, I'm gonna leave you with a pop quiz to test your hip hop knowledge. If this was an all West Coast hip hop show, where's the Mayotte only I'm gonna a West Coast rapper? If you think you know, drop it in the comment down below, and the first one to get it right, I will pin it to the top comment and upvote that shit. Remember to subscribe and share, and we'll see you next time. Peace!